Hey guys, this is Chelsea Schaefer and this is The Score. This is the Team Roping Journal's venture into the world of podcasting. On this show, you'll be able to bring the Team Roping World's movers and shakers on the road or to the office with you. They'll be telling stories and talking through some of the issues facing this sport. As the editor of the Team Roping Journal, I'll be your host. Hey everybody and welcome to The Score. I have lost track of what episode we're on right now. I think we're like on nine. Yeah, <laughs> so I think we're on nine. I think we have like 11 recorded. So you guys, you have so, there's so much cool stuff coming. Um, but right now we are going to talk to JD and Trey Yates today. And this is one of my favorites because these guys are, well, JD is a legend. Trey is working on it. And there is probably nobody hotter on the heel side than Trey Yates right now. So... Well, that's going to be a good episode. So. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be cool. But before we get there, I want to kind of go over a few things that are going on in the team roping industry. It is a um, critical time for the sport right now. There's, I'm like I mentioned, Aaron Sinaginny and Trey Yates are on fire. Uh, they had they split up for a week this week while Trey was going to Canada and Aaron was staying in the States. Um, and so because of kind of some shuffling around, Aaron roped with Blaine Vick at Pikes Peak or Bust, which is now a cinch PRCA rodeo. Yes. Um, that's, yes. So that's new. Yeah, there, I guess my understanding of, of the way that's going to work is there will be some circuit rodeos, about 120 maybe, that will be cinch rodeos, and the rest will be well, – the Wrangler NFR will remain the Wrangler NFR. So we're not going to get too much into that. But I did want to add that little tidbit with the – Yeah, definitely. And you can you can read more about it on Facebook page. Right? Yeah, our Facebook page has the press release from the PRCA. And as we kind of learn more about the way that's going to work, we will roll out more information. Nice. Um, you guys need to be getting in your entry forms for the U.S. Finals. They are live on USTRC.com. You can download the National Finals of Team Roping entry forms, stall reservation forms, um, and you can get your key card memberships. It's a critical time. Um, get your entries in. Get them rolling. We cannot wait to see you with us in Oklahoma City. There will be lots of media on the ground, lots of us there covering everything that's happening at the USTRC. Um, so we're excited to see you for sure in Oklahoma City. When does When is the event? In yeah, the- October 21st through 27th at the Oklahoma State Fairgrounds in OKC um you know there will be an awesome 16 pro-am that they're giving out case tractors um the the all girl is going to be super cool this year that I'm really excited to see numbers up again um on year over year so all right what's going on with the world series yeah the heartlands are kind of a key push right now the number 11 is in Stephenville on July 19th the number eight is in Hamilton on August 31st, and the nine is in Stephenville on September 27th. So far, they gave out $673,000 at Heartland Ropings alone. So be sure not to miss those throughout the year. Okay. Yeah. And, oh, and as an, as an aside, there have been seven American Cowboy number 10 qualifiers for RFD TV's The American, which is going to be next March. Those qualifiers, we've already got seven or eight teams, seven or eight qualification spots from Alberta, Canada, the whole way down to Sulphur, Louisiana, to San Luis Obispo, California, and everywhere in between. So there are a lot of teams that are going to have a shot at a guaranteed $100,000 in payout. So if you're looking around for where you're going to enter, check out the producers that are hosting these special American Cowboy 10 qualifiers across the USTRC and World Series. We're so excited about that push. Oh, and the... Next issue of the magazine, the August issue, that's got Cade Passig on the cover. He, and, by the way, you can listen to Cade's episode a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. um, on the score. Uh, but the August issue with Cade on the cover has a step-by-step guide for how you can qualify for the American Cowboy 10. If you're confused, do not be afraid to call the office and ask questions. Check out TeamRopingJournal.com. Check out WSTRRoping.com and USTRC.com. We have explanations everywhere. So we want to get you straightened out there. Perfect. All right. Without further ado, let's go right into today's episode. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys. This is JD and Trey Yates. I caught up with this father and son duo at the Greeley Stampede after they ran their steers in the slack. And, guys, that was before Trey went on his hot streak with Aaron Sinaginny and just smoked everybody over Cowboy Christmas. They won over 20000 I think it's – depending on how you count it, they were either the first or second highest – money-earning team over Cowboy Christmas. Dustin 
Egeskiza and Corey Koontz did awesome too. But um, Trey had a lot of cool things to say because he had just won Reno. I mean, this guy is on fire. So it was really special. This episode is brought to you by Resist All Hats as part of our Rope Vegas series. Resist All has joined on board to support coverage of the top guys in the standings all year long, plus the rookies, plus the amateurs that are battling to get to Las Vegas in December. So we are all about the push for Vegas. Thank you so much, Resist All Hats, and enjoy. Okay, guys, this is the Resist All episode of The Score, the podcast by the Team Roping Journal. We are with JD and Trey Yates here at the Greeley Stampede. Welcome, guys. Thank you. <laughs> um, guys, this is, it might, we'll visit a little bit because I hate to, anyways, Resist All wanted me to talk to you guys because you're kind of superstars of their team. JD, how long have you been with Resist All? Well, I've been was I've wore resist alls pretty much all my life, but I uh, just uh, been with resist all for oh shoot, I can't really tell you 10, 12 years. Yeah. And Trey, you're on the resist all best all around team. Uh, you have the black patch. Are you going to get the red patch this year? That's right. We live it every day. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, tell me, what was it like growing up in the Yates house? Tell, what's a day in the what when you were a kid? What was a day in the practice pen like? Uh, just a lot of roping, a lot of horses, and a lot of work. It's about all there is to it. Head and healing, calf roping, steer roping some days. It's just, it's a, it's a process. And, uh, you know, every day we try to make horses better. That's kind of our goal, so. Yeah, so in making horses better, when do you, you know, sometimes people say that you can only work on your horses or you can only work on your roping. It's hard to work on both. How do you manage to do both at home? Well, it's uh, it's kind of a tough gig for him anymore. I don't go that much, so I, you know, when I rope, I rope mainly rope for the horse at home, and and uh, when Trey's on the off season, he helps me do that. But when he's out, go there, going rodeo, and now I try to ride my good horses and and turn him some steers for him to practice, and then we do that first, and then mainly I'll just put him on horses to head and let me school and train on heel horses, so. It don't uh, affect his he, uh, roping that much as far as healing, but uh, you know uh, his goals are different right now, and I, I support his goals to go on and be as good as he can be. And I'm going to be the dad that tries to help out. Trey, when you were a kid, what was the thing you got in trouble for the most in the practice pen? Same thing as I do now. It's freaking out, getting mad. It's uh, you know one of the most painful things I ever experienced is when my grandpa would leave the arena because he didn't I mean he didn't want to be around me and and, uh that's hard to take you know and I still have moments where I I overreact and and I'm trying to get better at it and you know as far as my attitude my my dad and my grandpa they've kind of given up on me and left it to me I mean there's there's nothing they can do or say and I control my own destiny now so JD, there are a lot of parents that listen to this. Um, when he has a bad attitude, or when he had a bad attitude when he was a kid, I know he said you kind of leave him to his own now, but what was your strategy? Well, you know, uh, there, there's really no strategy, and and I don't know that it was a bad attitude. Is that he was striving to be as good as he could be, and when things wasn't rolling right, it upset him. And, and uh, you know, there's no real way to get over that unless you reach down yourself deep and... and uh, try to try to maintain that that temper you know uh, the the thing that I would do is you know and if it's going to be a bad attitude and you're having a bad day then you don't get to rope and you know after they work the shoots for about 40 or 50 runs that attitude seems to change a lot and they're ready to rope and it, it cleans it up but you know kids at a young age that want to be good they're going to go through some ups and downs and you've got to figure out how what the best mentality is to try to work with them and sometimes just um you know having them think about it and uh you know they because a lot you know a lot of words don't do no good when when the temper's already there it's kind of like when a horse has got uh you same thing with a horse when you get into it with a horse best things to do is just sit on him and ride him and an hour later go back and and uh, after just sitting on him and see if his attitude and temper changed and it seems like uh that that's the best process that I've found but uh, you know as a parent you just 
you wish the best for them and and uh, they'll if they want to they'll come through and make it um now your dad dick what he's kind of a, a superhuman he's just absolutely amazing at what point did horsemanship become such a priority? He's always riding the best horses. He's always... When did horsemanship become the mission of the Yates family, I guess? Well, it became a mission before I started, you know. He, his, uh, his goal was, well, we didn't have a chance to win if he wasn't riding a great horse. And uh, so he's always tried to train that one that was special. And he installed it in both of us from the start before we ever become competitors that you're never going to be no better than your horse and there's a lot of people that are and and, and that's fine you know I, I but as you get up there in age you like myself if I'm not riding a good one I, I don't have a chance and uh, so I feel like I take pride in it just as much as anybody and and take pride in watching my son rope and, and him riding a good horse you know and yeah it's uh it's it's a long-lived situation, you know, because what did he do? He won Reno Rodeo. He drove all night home, and Monday morning at 7 o'clock, I, we had, he had seven horses he had to ride. And, uh, you know, when does, you know, Saturday night when it was over and he got his award, that, that win, it's hard to put behind you, but, you know, what is your next best win? You never have it. You can win every day, but the next one is the best one. Trey, um, your grandpa, does he still inspire you? I mean, he's out there kicking butt at all the jackpots. Is he a huge source of inspiration for you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, my dad and him are my heroes. I mean, he shoes horses every day, ropes every day, drives a tractor. You know, I, I said it, if I can be half the man he is, I'd be a good guy or you know the best guy I could be I think he he's done it all he's been a jockey he's I mean you name it he's done it and he's done it as almost as good as you can do it he's a tap dancer I mean it doesn't matter he's a he is amazing he's just a hard worker and and uh you know he's 81 years old and and in shape as you, as anybody can be you know so what keeps him going what do you think is the secret oh he loves to rope and uh when you don't get to rope, you'll probably say goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, the best horses, you talk about the best horses. Can you say a best horse of your career? Oh, you know, no, I can't, uh, can't say a, a best horse. I can say that I've, I've been fortunate to have some really nice horses that's uh, helped me get to where I'm at. And, um, I had one great heel horse, probably Pac-Man. It was probably the best heel horse I ever had. And uh, so probably Buster was the best head horse I ever had. But I'm mean, fortunate to have two or three that were all pretty nice horses to, to win on. Yeah. Trey, you have, how old are you, 23? Yeah. 23. Um, in 23 years, what's the best one you've been on? Well... Honestly, I, it's my old sorrow horse. I'd have to say why, why. I mean, he's not fancy. He's kind of like pulling on a trailer. If you if you if you tried to pull a trailer over, that's what it's like trying to stop him. You know, going down the arena. But he's programmed to me, and and everything I've. I mean, from the jackpots at the junior high finals heading to the college finals, I've won dang near everything I've won's been on him. You know, and I got this bay horse dude, and I got my black horse, and. I think I think what a lot of people don't understand about like what we've experienced with some of our best horses is no different than the head horse he rode at the BFI or or my bay horse or the saw horse black horse any of them is there a process like it's been four years making my bay heel horse I mean he's always been amazing I mean the things he can do but it's to accustom him to to letting me win that's been the toughest part, you know, and he, we've had that sorrow horse for quite a few years, and and my dad took him to the BFI this year, and I mean, not that he wasn't capable of doing it eight years ago, but that's not what he felt comfortable riding, and, and it's, you know, it's all about comfort, I guess, you know, and that's why I ride that sorrow horse all the time. I, I just know that, I know every move he's going to make from the time I put the saddle on him to I uncinch him or whatever, you know, and it's just about, it's all mental and Mind over matter as far as winning, I think. So, 
Don't forget, this podcast is supported by U.S. Rider, the premier equestrian roadside assistance program in the industry. You've heard me talk about it every episode since the start, and now I want to give you a promo code so you all can subscribe and save money too. You get 14 months for the price of 12 with the promo code PC718. That is P as in Paul, C as in Cat, 718. You only get it if you're listening to the score. This is a score exclusive promo code. So head on over to usrider.org and subscribe. Um, JD, I was talking to Corey Koontz earlier and this done that he's been riding. He has had him since he was a yearling. He's finally 11 and he's finally getting comfortable with him. What's the longest you've ever given one to make? And, and, and what did you see in that one that it was worth it? Well, I, I don't know what the longest I was to ever give one, but, uh, you know, good horses will kind of tell you when they're ready to go out and uh, be competed on. You know, I take a lot of horses that uh, are probably not ready yet that uh, I'm needing to get some experience on and feel like I can get by them. But I don't enter that much, so I can go run two or three steers on one and go home, fix him and get another one, let him rest and think about it, you know. and. You know, fortunately, these guys out here rodeo, and it, it, there's so many rodeos, and they have to go so fast, and they don't have time to go home and take a take a break or go. You know, they can go practice, but you know, these horses that are good, they know they know when the money's up. I mean, if they can't feel your heart beating, there's you know, it's uh, the the money in in, in rodeo and and what it's done, it's amazing, and and you have to uh, you have to have that on your mind, and and. Fortunately, my mind's past that, and I don't, I don't have to worry about it too much. So, but uh, I enjoy, uh, I enjoy the process with Trey and and watching him go forward and shoot. That's that's what it's all about. Um, Trey, I just listened to you. You were making phone calls, making trades. JD, are you letting him kind of fit, find find his way on all of that by himself? I have nothing to do with the entering, nothing to do with where he's going or what he's doing. Um, I feel like that uh, he's 23, paid his dues, and uh, they'll figure it out. And, and uh, all I can do is be a phone call away for support. Is, you know, I'm a girl. Sometimes I need my mom. Sometimes I need to call my mom and talk to my mom about something that's going on. Do you ever need your dad? Like, make a phone, like, first phone call, you need to talk to your dad? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, my Uncle Jay, we talked about some stuff the other day. And, all he did was laugh and say that's rodeo so I mean it's just experiences and things we have to go through I guess and you know trading's hard entering's hard rodeo and period's hard and it's but it's what we want to do so I guess like he said he's going to support me and he'll do his best to help me but I mean it, it's up to me what I, you know or me and my partner or whatever the case is so JD did you ever think of doing anything different than this oh no no, I, uh, you know, I got my business, my uh, showing and, and my training and showing, and and I love it. And it, it's it's actually given me life after rodeo to still get to rope and, and make money and do what I love to do. But uh, my heart and my, my heart and my blood still flows in the rodeo world. You guys have traveled quite a bit. You go to Brazil often, right? Yeah. Um, what... Do you ever get the travel bug? Do you ever want to go anywhere else? Oh, not really. I mean, I've been to a lot of different places, a lot of different countries, and and roped and and all that. Uh, I kind of enjoy my deal in in Brazil, and and then uh, you know now that he's going, um, I just I can hang out and go a few just a few places and wait for the phone call and listen listen to the rodeo story. So that's what's good. He likes being gone. Don't let him. He, he when we roped, he he's ready to go home and practice for a day. But then he's ready to go. I mean, he likes to be away. And like you said, he's got a passion for rodeo. And so when we got, you know, we had we had some. I mean, I wouldn't trade when we roped together for nothing. It was the best time of my life. I, it was fun, you know, and just even even when we didn't, when we had we had a blast. You did. Oh yeah, it was so fun, and we stayed a lot of cool places, and and uh, I learned a lot. I mean, there was ups and definitely downs. I I dang sure I uh, I'm pretty fortunate the way I reacted at times to some situations. I was roping with him because there's a lot of people that wouldn't have handled it very well. I don't think, <laughs> and 
and I dang sure learned my lesson. So it was fun, though. We had it was the best time. So that's awesome. What was your favorite win together? Oh, definitely Cheyenne when he won the all around. And we won third in the team rope, and there's that. And then we won fifth at the BFI because I'm going to tell on him. Uh, like, I mean, I was young, and I healed the steer, and I pulled back, and I was running out of the arena, and I caught up to him, and he was he was crying, like, before we got out of the arena. And uh, it was pretty it was pretty cool. I mean, to, to, to win, just to rope with him, like, that's what he said, you know. Just for us to be even, able to even rope there was, was the best thing in the world, you know. And... Uh, you know, it, it was a lot of special things. He rode it. He rode Buster, and Buster was up there in age, and it it just all. And he retired him at Cheyenne that day yeah. when we won third. I mean, it, there was just it's all kind of a family deal, horses and and us and everything. You know, my grandparents were at Cheyenne that day, and Kelly. it was cool. Kelly was there, and and it, it was it's a family affair. You know, it's pretty cool. Um, Kelly, you. How often do you guys go back and forth between barrel horses and head horses? What's the... I take as many of hers as I can. <laughs> Does she just pick that good? Oh, uh, well, she's got a pretty good eye for a horse, and uh, we rope on all of her barrel horses. She ropes on them, uh, you know, and, and uh, in fact, the one I'll probably bring back up here to ride is another one of her barrel horses for the second one here at Greeley, and... and uh, it's one I rode when me and Trey rode quite a bit, and so I, you know, fortunate that, uh, you know, we I'll get them going, and she runs barrels on them for a while, and I'll rope on them for a while, and you know, it's just whatever who needs when when we need it, and uh, we're all just glad to see each other go and try to be successful. What does Kelly do so well with one that makes it easy for you to take over? Well, she, you know, she gets them broke and gentle and and quiet, and gets them doing a lot of stuff that. Uh, you know, I'm doing it to others, and she's doing it to hers. And uh, you know, it it just seemed like that she's she's been fortunate to have a pretty good string of horses and have a pretty good knowledge of how they're supposed to have been broke and, and do the right thing on them. That you know, when I go to roping on them, it's a lot of the work's done. I've just got to put some of the finer touches on them for the roping, you know, and and then give them a couple of years to really settle in, and so it all works out pretty good. That's awesome. Real quick, back to Brazil. Um, what is your relationship in Brazil? What tell me? Tell me a little bit about your program there. Well, we I, it's it relates and uh, revolves back around horse showing, and uh, we got a horse show deal over there, and I go over there, and uh, they buy a lot of horses from me here. I train and I ship them over there, and there's a really really good kid over there that uh, trains, and his name's Rafael Pagliano, and and uh, he's just you know he's been here and learned a lot and he comes every year and spends time with me and we keep modifying and he keeps the horses going and we talk on the phone a lot if he's having problems or i'm having problems and uh so it, it revolves more around the the horse show industry and and it, it's been good for us awesome trey brazil do you love it yeah i went once it was fun uh different uh, I like to talk, and wasn't much of that going on because <laughs> not many people to communicate with. But uh, no, it was good. The horse shows are cool. There's a lot of a lot of neat horses over there, and there's there's guys over there that people haven't even heard of that rope really good. I mean, it's uh, it kind of relates to here. I, I guess the only thing is there's not as many that rope good, but there's quite a few still that that rope good and and seem to do a good job with horses and and. Uh, it was it was a neat experience and I I look forward to going back. So, on the horse show deal, uh, forty thousand foot view, where do you see the rope horse fraternities going? What's the what's the dream there? Well, I th I see uh, the rope horse fraternities really taking off. I mean, uh, they had double the entries last year they thought they was going to have, and uh, you know it's kind of like the rodeo world. Uh, um, I felt like I'm twenty five years too late because by the time it gets huge. <laughs> I'm going to have to sit in the stands, and it's kind of the way it is rodeo, and I get to go to a few, but, you know, just to sit and watch these guys rope, it's pretty amazing. But I see it being a big uh, big impact in the roping industry. Trey, do you, want, do you have plans in the Rope Horse Futurity deal? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got quite a few good horses, and I like the horse show deal. And uh, um, the Rope Horse Futurities, I mean, I feel a little more apart than at the horse shows maybe just because there's – it's it's – about good rope horses and and roping too you know and i haven't done much of the horse show deal and 
I know I got so much to learn for that, but we take a lot of good rope horses, so the sharper I rope, the it seems like the sharper the horses will work. And to me, that's that's what I appreciate about the, the rope horse fraternity deal, you know. Cool. And guys, before we end, what does we live it every day mean to you? Oh, you know, just to every morning when you get up, try to make it a better day and make uh, your horses better and yourself a better person and uh, be as successful as you can possibly be. Amen. Okay, everybody, thank you so much to J.D. and Trey for taking the time out of their day to visit with us, and I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you leave us a review on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher, and however you're listening to the score. Thanks, everybody.